All right, everybody, this is Ross. Welcome back to another episode of Fruit Talk. This is the podcast style video that I do for you guys every Wednesday night, 9 o'clock Eastern. Well, most Wednesday nights. Um, we talk a lot about fruits, a lot about vegetables, how to use some of that stuff in the kitchen, and then also, you know, how to grow it. But really, the more weird and interesting fruits and vegetables that maybe you guys have never heard of. And that's actually a really big topic that we're going to talk about tonight is we're going to go into pretty good detail about the different annual fruits and vegetables that I have decided to grow in this upcoming season. And a lot of them are, are quite new, actually. There, there are some that I would say are definitely my standards, the varieties I'll probably never not grow, or at least for the un unforeseeable future. And then also we're going to talk about the, the new stuff that's really caught my eye for various different reasons. And I'm quite excited to grow it. So we're going to share all that with you guys in this this episode. And then also before we get into that, we're going to start off with uh, another large topic, unfortunately, about why I decided to um, leave the fig communities for good. And I know there's been a lot of people who have reached out to me, um, have been worried about me. I don't know how this sort of happened, but people some for some reason thought I wasn't doing okay. Uh, it's actually been the complete opposite. I've really never been better. <laughs> I've been better since uh, really it was in my early 20s, to be honest with you. Um, in terms of how, my health and how I'm feeling, I know I've talked a lot about that on this podcast. I really um, have been doing well in so many areas of my life, or at least better, I should say, in so many areas of my life, not just my health, but um, in terms of the CPA exam, we, we passed the FAR exam, and then I just took auditing. It was a very, a very busy time in my life um, preparing for that, and that's just kind of what you got to do is really buckle down and be a hermit, not really um, you know, put, put a whole lot of time into other things. There's just a lot of distractions and a lot of different things I do with my life, so um, you know, I have to just essentially, unfortunately, stop making videos as often as I as I was. So that's really the big reason why I guess I haven't put out a whole lot of content recently. Just kind of been enjoying the holidays after I took my exam. You know, my exam, I, I took it uh, not this past Saturday, but the, but the prior Saturday. Um, so it's been almost two weeks. By the time I think this video comes out, maybe I'll put this one out on Friday. So it'll be almost two weeks at that point. And I've just been slaving away and I don't know the result. I won't know the result for quite some time on that auditing exam, but it uh, I really left the exam feeling very good about it. So I think I may have passed. If I did, that really, really means good things um, because I would imagine probably by the summer I will have my license. So that that's a big hurdle and a big thing that I've been trying to do for years that you guys probably, if you followed me from really the beginning, you know, somewhat about that so um it's finally coming all together you know uh, my investments are working out my health's working out i mean almost everything in my life uh is on the up so there really isn't any um reason to be worried about me i do appreciate that guys um but in, in fact, I've actually, you could make an argument that I'm even better off not being a part of the fig communities, which we've really talked a lot about over the last six months, maybe even the last year. You know, I've talked about slowly drifting away from the fig communities because they, they don't really offer me anything in return for the most part. I really get very little out of it. I do enjoy the fact that people share uh, what they're growing and um, share their thoughts and all of that, and I can get people's opinions. But, you know, um, there's a lot of negative that comes along with these communities, unfortunately, and especially for me. Um, you know, as, as somebody who, you know, um, you know, kind of represents, people call me a celebrity, represent, I represent maybe you could even say a business uh, with this brand that I've created over the last how many years it's been. Um, there really isn't a whole lot of benefit I get by putting my information on um, an open community like that. 
that's not less necessarily governed um, correctly or uh, governed by myself, you know. Um, and I don't want to do that, you know. That was a big thought that people have been asking me for years. It's like, Ross, why don't you just create your own fig community? Why don't you just have a Ross Ratty group or something about figs? And I don't want to do that, you know. I don't want to force people into a group that, um, well, maybe not force them into it, but I don't, I don't really want to be managing people, uh, babysitting adults. You know, there's already so much uh, ignorance, idiocy throughout this world that um, I don't really want to have any part of it, to be honest with you. That's a big reason why I'm leaving is that there's just so much ignorance and stupidity a part of these groups that I, I just can't, I can't entertain the idea any longer is, is really what it comes down to. You know, I thought I was going to maybe type something up and say something to people, but I was just so darn busy that I figured I don't need any of those distractions right now. I need to focus on my exam and I'll just, you know, create a video like this later, later on talking about it. Um, so I, you know, I don't really want to be babysitting adults that are twice my age. It's really, it really is quite sad. Um, and it's difficult organizing people. I, I have to give my hat off, even though I, I do disagree with the culture and the communities themselves. Um, every single community, in, including our figs, which is really my favorite and one I've been a part of the longest. Um, they are honestly just not, in my opinion, governed correctly. But you have to give your hats off to those people who run it. Um, a lot of those people are my friends, you know, um, it's not easy. It's not, it's, it's extremely difficult. I'm not knocking those people at all, but you know, if, if I was, let's say the organizer, or the, the, um, you know, the, the person in charge of the community people, anyone that was, ig that was just blatantly saying the wrong thing or really just causing, just really being one of those bad apples is really what it comes down to. There's, there's so many good people in the hobby of growing figs. You could say maybe 95% of them or more um, are good. And that's kind of like with anything. It's not just a, this isn't a fig related problem. This is in everything in life where those 5% of the bad apples tend to ruin it for the rest of the people. So if, if I was the one in charge, which I, again, I don't want to be in charge of this uh, or have anything to do with this kind of thing. Um, I would just remove those people in, in a heartbeat. It wouldn't affect me at all. Um, you're gone. See you later. Bye-bye. You're causing a ruckus. Uh, we don't need you. You're not contributing in any way. In fact, you're probably negatively contributing to the community. So we're just going to get rid of you. Why do, why do we need you in our group? We don't need, you know, if I, if I was in charge of a group, I don't need thousands of people who, um, you know, are a part of the group. I'd be happy with a, a set 100 or may, let's say even less than that of people who actually are active and participating in a positive way, a part of that community. You know, I don't need to open something up to the public. The reason why some of these groups are open to the public is because, um, for one, there's usually someone behind the community who is profiting in some way. It used to be like that. It started off at Figs for Fun with John Verdict, and uh, no offense to him, but he was in, in some way profiting off of Figs for Fun, even though it was a public group and there was a lot of good that came out of it, um, and it really created this hobby for a lot of people. You know, people got really tired of that portion of it, that this group was really, in a sense, a way to profit John Verdict, and... Um, you know, maybe John doesn't see it like that, but you could make an argument, and maybe that wasn't his intention, but you could make an argument that that was the case. The same thing could be said for our figs. I love Wills to death, but, you know, at the end of the day, he is there um, making some sort of a profit off of the group because he's the leader. So, um, and he has his little sale every year. But not to say that no one can have a sale like that. It's just that, um, he is in some way benefiting from that. Um, just like I, in some way benefit from my YouTube channel, right? People may buy my cuttings because they like my videos, right? 
people may buy figs from uh, cuttings from wills because they like the form or they like the community and they want to um, pay it back, right? So there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing against it. It's just that I think that there's a there's that big portion of it um, that somehow infects itself into these communities, and it's just not um, it's just not a good thing. Um, for the overall health and longevity of the community. If you wanted a good culture, because that's what a community really thrives on, is having a good culture, having good people within it that can contribute positively to the culture. If you have that, then you're good. You're going to have that longevity and that health that you're looking for. So if I, ha if I, you know, if I was going to create a community, as an example, um, well, actually, I am. We're, we're going to get to that in a minute. I know this, this sounds crazy, but which is going against everything I'm just saying. But um, w I, <laughs> this makes sense now. <laughs> okay, so let me just let me just put this out there real quick. I am creating a community, but it's not going to be a public community. It's just the community of my friends, basically. That's it. Um, you know, uh, it's going to be on Facebook. It's only, it's invite only. Maybe you can get in if you know somebody, or if I'm going to invite you myself, I'm not going to be really in charge of this. I'm just the creator. I'm not benefiting in any way of this group. Um, I'm going to detail this out to a lot of my friends and at some point here in the future, I'm not really in a rush to get this whole thing going just yet. It's not really a big priority for me right now. But at some point we will, um, I will create, I already, already created the community. It's called uh, the Fig Mafia. <laughs> because essentially there is all these bad apples, a part of these communities who um, I refer to them as the swamp. It's bas they're basically the swamp, right? Um, they're all the people trying to drive people out of the hobby um, and trying to profit off of the, the people who don't necessarily know anything. Um that's what I would refer to as the swamp. The, the fig mafia is what the swamp refers to the people who are apparently a consortium of fig growers who are controlling everything related to figs. So the swamp's trying to fight the fig mafia. But the fig mafia, believe it or not, is uh, people who are actually in the hobby for the right reason. And I know that's hard to believe because our name is the fig mafia. But it's really just a joke at this point. Um... So that's essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to create this fig group as sort of just a giant joke to these idiots. And we're going to essentially um, have a group of people with a good culture, a small group. I'm, I'm not trying to make this group large. Uh, I don't want to have it open to the public. It's invite only. So essentially I'm going to invite my friends. And if my friends want to invite people, they can do that themselves. It's up to them. Um it's just going to be for people who are in this hobby for the right reasons, who I want to share information with. And then um, they also don't have any personality disorders, you know? I mean, they're, they're respectable people, you know? So there's no bad apples, and that's essentially it. Well, that's, that's how I will continue this hobby because um, I don't want to be a part of these other groups. And I mentioned a couple reasons so far, but think about it, right? you know new year's eve it's the new year right happy 2021 everybody so um you know a good new year's resolution for anybody out there is if you have somebody in your life whether that's your boyfriend your girlfriend uh, one of your friends your boss anyone in your life who is bringing you down and not positively contributing to your growth your happiness your life you should get rid of that person they are just a constant thorn in your side. Why keep them around? You know, if they're your family, you're kind of stuck with them, right? If they're your friends, there's someone else, in the exterior part of your life that you have control over, get rid of them. Move on. You know, um, I don't know why people hold on to these kind of things. People hold on to trees, as an example. They get very sentimental about their trees. It may be the worst fig variety they could grow in, let's say, Pennsylvania, but they hold on to it. I don't know why. Um, people get sentimental about all kinds of things, but you know, you know, and there's all kinds of reasons for this. Maybe you have a girlfriend or a boyfriend. You just, 
you're holding on to them because you you feel safe or you you feel uh, secure in some way, but you really don't necessarily love the person as much as you could or whatever it is. You know, people hold on to people for the weirdest reasons. And my advice really is just to get rid of it. Just get rid of that person. Move on. Um, so it's the same thing. This fig, these fig groups are not in any really very little way po uh, positively contributing to my life and my growth. Um, if there was a bunch of fig growers on there that I could learn from and pick their brains and get some ideas from, and and uh, you know they were outside of my friends, right? Very easily, I could just talk to any of my friends at any time, send them an email, and say, "Hey, uh, Ed or." Big Bill or, you know, uh, Steve, what are you guys doing? How are you doing? Tony, what's up? You know, and just say, you know, what do you guys think about this? What do you think about that? Um, I don't need a community for that. You know, but if there was, let's say, only one way to reach out to some of these people and it was the community, then maybe I would be forced. And that's what I would do. And that's sort of, I guess, how you how I felt maybe when I first started is that I don't necessarily, I'm not, I'm not saying don't join these communities, don't be a part of them, because there is some value in it if you're new, if you're brand new to this. But as soon as you get more into this hobby, you've been around for a, a number of years, you get tired of it. There's too many bad apples. There's too many people who are in this for the wrong reasons. There's too many people selling yada, yada, yada for, you know, they don't know a single thing about it. Um, you know, it's just, it's just crazy, the whole thing. Um, and then I guess the last thing I want to mention, because we could really talk this whole thing to death, but, you know, there's just a, as I've mentioned so many times, a lot of people are ignorant, um, jealous of myself, um, ignorant of what we're doing here on this channel. Um, people just go to crazy lengths when money is involved. It's just, it, it just gets out of control, you know? So I'm trying to avoid that with this new group here. Um, and I think you, I think if you do the same thing at some point, I mean, I, I finally get it, you know, for a longest time, I didn't understand why someone like Herman too, um, someone like some of the very old time fig growers who are part of figs for fun. They never joined another community after that. Um, they never decided to spread their knowledge. It was like, um, you know, figs for fun died and a whole lot of knowledge died along with it because those fig growers that were there never decided to become a part of some other group. And even they just became hermits and didn't share anything. And it was really sad. Um, it's sort of the same thing that's happened just now with me, you know, not that I'm Herman too, but definitely somebody that a lot of people looked up to in these fig communities. And now I'm gone. You know, um, so it just, I think, goes to show you what really the life cycle is of these groups and that you join, you make a lot of friends, you learn as much as you can, and then you get more and more into this and eventually you, you leave. And I think that for me, I didn't understand why people left, but now I really get it, um, is that really the, the, the positives don't outweigh the negatives for me at this point. So again... You can be a part of this, part of these groups, whatever it is you want to do. That's fine with me. I'm just not going to recommend them um, really anymore, and we haven't been recommending them for, for quite some time. So I'm going to mostly keep to myself on my YouTube channel, my blog. Um, you know, that's really what's helping me anyway, you know, in terms of a selfish standpoint, but also helping a lot of people as well. You know, it's not like my videos are not helping anybody or my blog posts are not helping anybody. And by me not being a part of these big communities, it's not like I'm not helping anybody anyway because I have really, you know, thousands of people that I help. So, um, you know, it is what it is here, guys. Um, don't really know what else to say. There there was um, this sale that happened um, with a crazy person and essentially – um, that was sort of the last straw of the whole thing. You know, all the distractions that came along with that, I couldn't put up with that. I couldn't handle the negative um, while I was studying for the CPA exam. So all that crazy nonsense really um, was sort of really the last straw. It really was the defining factor, but it, it was sort of a good thing. Um, it really made me awaken, woke, I woke up 
to uh i don't really have to be a part of these groups anymore you know what i mean that was like a wake-up call so in a in a sense i'm actually appreciative for this crazy person but um you know at the end of the day uh if anyone out there is a seller and they're, they're listening i mean you know exactly what i'm talking about just the insanity that you have to deal with um from just very few particular people that every year they just come up and there's always someone like that. So, um, I could get into all the details about it, but, um, you know, for some of these people who, uh, really are totally ignorant and have never even heard my side of the story, they only heard one guy's point of view. Um, and they think less of me for it. It's just, it blows my mind. Uh, that, that right there, I think in all honesty, I learned a lot from that because people said that I was a celebrity, a fig celebrity, <laughs> but I actually do. I feel like a, a celebrity now with, with that recent event that has happened. It's kind of like, uh, I was, you know, the saying is innocent until proven guilty, right? But it was the total opposite. I was guilty until proven innocent and I don't need to prove anything to anybody, you know? Um, so I didn't feel the need to, continue this uh this constant distraction in these groups and fight a bunch of idiots on a topic that they don't even care about what they really care about is destroying me so you know why f why fuel that fire it doesn't it doesn't make any sense um people are going to believe what they want to believe and and uh that's up to them i don't i don't really care um again i've said that a, a million times i'm sure people I've understood that at this point about me is that, you know, I really have no shame. I don't really care what people think about me. I'm not in this to be, um, essentially famous or to get attention. Unlike some people have this weird conspiracy theory about me. So, um, yeah, uh, I think that's enough on that topic. Um, Oh, there, there is one last thing. So if anyone even knows what I'm talking about in terms of this crazy guy um, claiming that I scammed him, um, I got the cuttings back, uh, gave the guy a refund, just an unhappy customer for anybody that has no idea what's going on. But I decided um, I was going to mark the cuttings that I sent him because, you know, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, and I'm going to root them. And then I'm going to uh, basically turn them into trees and rub it in everybody's face. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, uh, can't wait to, to uh, have those in the trees. In fact, I, if I really wanted to, I could probably take those cuttings I sent that guy. And I, I counted the amount of nodes. I think there was like there was four on the one and eight on the other. So I could I could potentially even have 12 trees. Uh, if I grafted just those two cuttings, so um, gonna root them, just out of principle. Um, maybe I'll cut the tops off or something and, and graft that. I don't know, but point is, is that I'm happy to have the cuttings back because it's my favorite variety. And to be honest with you, um, didn't really want to share with really many people at all this year with that variety because wanted to have as many trees of that variety as possible. So. Um, now that it's dirty money, basically, I'm happy to have them back. Um, yeah. All right. So let's talk now about the, uh, the annuals guys that we're going to grow this upcoming season. Um, and hopefully guys, this just another short announcement real quick. We're going to have more videos coming out. We're kind of back in business now. Um, I think I'm kind of off, you know, I mean, Took the test, took a little break. Now we're back. So that's kind of what I wanted to say. Um, all righty. So if you remember, we did a fruit talk episode, or we I think it was a fruit talk episode, where we talked about the garden and what the plans were. Again, it's stupidly important to always plan your garden. Figure this out ahead of time. It makes this whole process so easy. What do you want to grow? Not maybe not necessarily the varieties just yet, but what do you want to grow and where do you want to grow it? How much of it do you want to grow? That's what we do here in these spreadsheets in Excel. It's so, so simple. Anyone can do this. I've showed you guys how to do this a million times. 
and this is what we're doing here. This is all the garden plants, basically. And um, again, it's not even filled out completely. It's not totally done, but I get the basic general outline of this. Now I can select different varieties and figure out where, based on the varieties I've chosen, how much of each particular thing maybe I want to grow, or maybe I want to grow more of something else now and a little bit less of something else. Um, you know, whatever. It gives you... Essentially, we're not done finalizing this until really the spring. I mean, this is going to change quite a bit. Maybe we learn something in the future. Maybe some of you guys after this video, I hope, are going to tell me some recommendations of things that I should grow. Every year we learn something. Every year I hear you guys out and some people change my thoughts on different things. I always love the recommend. It's one of the, it's one of the best things about having this YouTube channel, I think, at a personal level is hearing all the things that you guys are growing and what you guys are doing. Um, it just gives so many ideas for this particular, for this whole thing. You know, I love the uh, inspiration that, that you guys not only give me, but <clears throat> that I can give you guys. So here's my little research. Um, not just based on, you know, what I found out recently or this year, uh, but also what I have been, uh, really have good success with now through my experience. So, um, of course, if we go through everything, um, there's some of this stuff here that I'm not buying seeds of because I already have seeds of it and don't necessarily need to buy more plants. But, you know, the tomatoes are pretty darn standard. Like, we should start with those is that we've talked a lot about them, but I love, love, love pink brandywine. Now, this is a big beefsteak type tomato, right? So there's different types. There's the big beefsteaks. There's the salad types, which are, you know, a little bit like a, like a golf ball size or maybe larger, uh, maybe a tennis ball size. You know, then you got some other ones that you could say are more of the Roma types or the paste tomatoes, which are usually are more elongated. They have very little seeds. Um, they also have very little gel on the inside. And then you've got the last type, essentially, which is the cherry tomatoes, different various types of cherry tomatoes or currant tomatoes or whatever you want to call them. Just smaller versions of tomatoes that you can eat in one bite, right? And you can also cook with them. So for me, I don't see a great use for the salad types. Um, green zebra is my favorite of the salad types. It really is about the size of a tennis ball or maybe slightly smaller. And they have this most amazing flavor that you can only really get from green tomatoes. They're very acidic. I think I'll always grow them. You can cook with them. I personally like eating them fresh. And uh, for me, I think it's right up there, almost with a pink brandy wine, when you slice it or eat it fresh. Um, so that's why I'm growing that particular tomato. Now, my favorite paste tomato is the orange banana. And um, I guess before we get into that, let's just cover, because pink brandy wine is the tops, right? Almost nothing beats that. I said green zebra is different. It's not the same. It's different enough to, I think, make me think I should grow both of them. I love them both. Those are more of the slicing sandwich tomatoes type things like that. You can also use them, by the way, in sauce. There's nothing wrong with using any of these heirloom tomatoes in sauce, but um, I find personally this orange banana tomato is ridiculous for sauce. And here it is on Fedco. And they say here, I would never have believed that the best tomato sauce comes from an orange tomato, but the proof is in eating the orange banana is in the eating. An orange banana has a, been a perennial winner of our annual paste taste off. Um, now what's her face? Uh, Amy Goldman in her book about the tomatoes. She actually had this one in here and that's how I found out about it. And these reviews, I mean, it really is. It's true. It really is ridiculous, this tomato. Now, it does have some problems, so it's not impervious, but the flavor is incredible. I, it does, in fact, get some blossom end rot. So you want to really, especially me who grows them very dense, got to feed the soil that calcium. Ooh, excuse me, guys. Got to give them that calcium. Otherwise, they're going to struggle, and they're going to get that blossom end rot. Um they're not impervious to disease either, but they're quite productive. 
Uh, I think they're re relatively vigorous vines. Um, overall, you get a good production out of them. And for me, the flavor is tops. I can't find anything. At least I don't know of any paste tomato that's better. I absolutely love it. Um, it really does create an orange sauce, by the way. And my sauce is out of this world good. So um, if there's one thing I make in the kitchen, I think my sauce is like, it's just, it's up there with some of... Um, some of my best. So, all right. Now, the last little car category here is actually the cherry tomatoes. And there's the uh, black cherry. That's the standard. That's the one I love. It's stupidly productive. Here's the thing, right? Those cherry tomatoes have a very different texture than a beefsteak. However, the black cherry tomato is quite similar to a big, meaty beefsteak. It's really incredible how close that black cherry tomato can be to a big beefsteak tomato. So for eating them fresh, extremely hard to beat. They're also very productive. They're a little bit on the later side. However, it's very easy to slice them in half, uh, put them in the wok or the, on the pan or something, and they just add some really great flavor to whatever it is you're cooking. Um, I love slicing those in half and cooking with them. Now, this also brings up another point, two other varieties that I really wanted to grow again or try. One is the Blonde Kopschkin, which if I, Blonde Kopschkin tomato. Another name for this is called Ely, I think, AKA Little Blonde Girl. And um, this is an extremely productive tomato, rarely cracks, Great flavor. I, I think they taste almost as good, if not better, than Sun Gold. And they have ridiculous yields. I mean, ridiculous. The clusters of them are massive. You know, like the, the super sweet 100s, they're supposed to say you can get 100 tomatoes on one truss of tomatoes. You can get about 50 on a blonde Kopschkin tomato. They're pretty compact plants. Um, they like to really bush out a little bit. If you grow them as a, as a multi-stem or a single stem up a pole, they're stupidly productive. Um, and you would just will not, you'll be amazed, I think, at how much fruit you can get off of them at a good quality. I considering growing one or two vines of that because it's such a good, such an interesting tomato. Now, the last one here is one that it's new. It's new to me. I haven't um, grown it before. But I've heard a lot about it, and my buddy Dom talks about it. Um, um, I saw it on someone else's YouTube channel. But it's called the Principe Borghese tomato, and this is um, a tomato that really has great flavor, right? That's really what this is all about. But the Italians use this tomato to dry them in the sun or to dry them because they have very good drying capabilities for tomatoes and you can really almost let them dry on the vine you can take them off put them in the sun you could um, put them in a dehydrator you can put them in the oven for me i think this is extremely valuable because i want to have some of these dried tomatoes um throughout the winter time you know when i can't get the tomatoes i've basically been if I go to the store and I see some uh, black cherry, actually, you can see you can find black cherry heirloom tomatoes at the store. I, I'll buy them, and I'll cut them in half, and I'll cook with them. But this has got to be better, and obviously it's saving me money, and uh, it's just something that if I can make this work, um, I want it to work. You know what I mean? So I, I'm really excited to even just try this tomato. Like, really has great reviews on it, um, and a lot of people grow it throughout Italy and stuff. So uh, we'll see. Um, now let's move on here because um, we could probably talk about the uh, tomatoes for a long time. Now the melons were still undecided and I have to put in a lot of research and time into finding these melon seeds. There were some of you guys who contacted me when we talked about our melons this summer and I really want to find melon varieties that have very high bricks. We're going to graft them this year. Um, I think that's pretty much a guarantee for me is I'm going to really try hard to graft annual plants for the first time. I'm sure it's not that difficult, but I've never put in a whole lot of effort into it. 
we're going to graft, we're going to grow them vertically. Uh, each box here essentially is going to have two melon plants in it. They're going to be spaced one and a half square feet apart. Each melon plant gets one and a half square feet and they're all being grown vertically and they're all going to be basically sprayed at multi many times of the year with uh, Dynagrow Protect to help them defend themselves against the cucumber beetle to prevent that fusarium wilt. This is going to be a guarantee, I have a feeling. We're going to be able to grow these, no problem, um, if I graft them and if I'm going to be spraying them. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're going to do. And... Da, 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 da. So that's what we're, yeah, we have a lot of room here. I've essentially dedicated a ton of room for these melons. Now, there is one melon variety. I think it's the Petite Reese de Rene. I think that's the one that is the highest bricks. But you can find higher bricks melons, and that's what we're going to really try to focus on. If somebody has seeds or knows where I, excuse me, guys, knows where I can order them and get them, Please let me know. I'm going to try to look through my prior messages. I know a couple of you guys messaged me on Facebook and things. We're going to look there um, and figure that out because I do want to grow the highest bricks melons possible to get that experience that I had once in uh, in Japan. Now, my eggplants are pretty simple. We're going to grow the, uh, the swallow eggplant. Now, we have actually dug up are eggplants and pepper plants put them into a five gallon pot and they're overwintering now in the greenhouse if they can get through the winter time i will very simply just plant those back into the raised bed here and i'll be growing them from more mature plants and that would be the best scenario possible but i have a feeling some of them are not going to make it also my eggplants don't look too great right now so we're going to still order seed just in case and start seeds just in case. But the swallow eggplant for me is is really, really good. Um, here in this northern climate, um, it's done so well. And um, let's see here. It says it right here on Fedco. The one eggplant to grow if you live in a cold part of the world. Early production. They produced a ton of fruits, guys. Um not only did they produce a ton of fruits, but I love the shape of the Asian type eggplants, the long and slender types. You cut them um, lengthwise, and you can make the best eggplant fries. My family in, like loved them. Every time I brought in some eggplants, they just got super excited because those eggplant fries are incredible. They're way better than any potato fry I've ever had. Um, and you just cut them into very thin strips, cover them with olive oil and salt, put them in the oven and they get nice and crispy you don't want them to burn um but nice and brown and they get so so good so that that for me is tops right there and then what we're gonna do actually is we're gonna grow our basil our oregano in here we have plans for a tomatillo and this tomatillo uh i found out about this from a youtube grower that was relatively new this year. He was growing this variety called Queen of Malinalco. Looked interesting. He was just claiming that you can eat it fresh. I thought that was great. We started making salsa for the first time this year. I got to have my salsa. You know, it's something definitely that uh, we're going to be making probably every year. And having tomatillos of our own is definitely going to make that a better experience. Um, now this one, apparently, like I said, you can eat it fresh. I want to taste a, a fresh tomatillo. We'll see. I'm excited for this variety. Uh, if I can't get this one, maybe I'll have to go with something else, but, um, yeah, definitely seems interesting. Uh, yeah. So there's that. And then our peppers, let's just finish off with our peppers here in this Southern bed. Oh, we have, we have the cucumbers as well. We're going to do the Jimmy Nardello peppers for sure. Again, I dug up a lot of them, have them in a pot. I also have probably in that pot maybe a couple hot peppers. I have the um, the uh, chocolate ghost pepper, I believe, as well in there. There's a couple of those. So we're going to grow ghost peppers again. Those are specifically going to be for hot sauce. Yes, I can eat ghost peppers. 
yes, I love hot hot sauce. So even ghost pepper really isn't that hot. Um, I'd love to probably, I think I have some habanero seeds as well. So the ghost pepper seeds, habanero seeds, we're going to make our own hot sauce. I think I can do it better than some of these, you know, big, big guys that, uh, that do this. Plus you need to get, I need to practice, right? I'm not going to get it right the first time, but certainly I want to be able to do this, uh, for the future and have a, a hot sauce that I don't have to necessarily buy all the time that's either not hot enough or not doesn't have the right flavor for me or whatever it is we hot sauce is such a great thing i think to make because you can get super creative it's not that difficult and they can be incredibly good um i've tried a lot of hot sauces now over the last four ish years and i'd probably say there's there are some i really love and there's a lot i'm just like oh you know that's okay you know what i mean so uh I should just stick to the ones I love, but I like trying new ones. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys are doing the same thing. And now, I'm also going to grow some shishito peppers. I think you got to grow shishitos. I, I think I was crazy for years not growing these shishitos. So we're going to grow this particular variety. It's called Takara Shishito. Um, seems to be a hybrid, but a hybrid that does pretty darn well. So we'll see. Love the shishito peppers. They're so good when you grill them. Um, what's been really nice is I made a lot of preserved peppers this year, and those are fantastic. I mean, that recipe, whatever it is I did this year, they came out amazing. Um, those are like some of the best eaten, I'm telling you. Preserved peppers, I preserved them in olive oil and... Um, and water and apple cider vinegar and white vinegar. It was like a combination of all four. We got garlic in there. I've got uh, all kinds of stuff. Oh, man, it's so good. I'll have to show it to you guys at some point. I'm kind of worried about how dense it is because if it's so dense, the air doesn't get in there or something. Or I don't remember what it is, but if it's too dense, I think mm. you have a problem. So I don't necessarily... I don't know. I, I may not have uh, did it correctly, just in terms of like botulism or something. You know what I mean? Anyway, I don't know. We'll see. If anyone knows anything about that, let me know. All right. So that's the pepper story. Now, the cucumbers, pretty simple. The National Pickling Cucumber, we grew this last year. It's actually really, really good. Um, puts out a lot of cucumbers pretty reliable uh, not the I mean not the best producing cucumber I've ever seen but I think it was pretty dependable like it says here I mean they are pretty dependable producers um, the great part about it is I have pickles and made tons of pickles out of these this year to this day they still have their firm crispness to them they're very crisp pickle fantastic I'm really in love with this pickle my mom said they were the best pickles she ever had. So, uh, you know, got to keep the mom happy, right? Um, basically, I, if anyone doesn't know, but I, I make pickles really for the whole family. Um, at least I try to. My grandma loves pickles. My great-grandfather My great grandfather used to have a, a really good pickle recipe that he passed on to us and I use to this day. And... Um, he, that's what he used to do is he used to give people pickles like he, he used to make them and every you know a lot of times when we see him he would get us the pickles and uh he'd make them homemade um obviously wouldn't grow the cucumbers themselves but uh he would make really really good cucumbers so um it's not easy it's not difficult to do and i did a video on this not too long ago guys i think sometime in the fall uh, you guys can go back and see it. It's a really, really great pickle recipe. Anyway, this one's fantastic. Now, I did grow a Boothby's Blonde the last year, and I grew lemon the year before, and I'm not really on those lemon white cucumbers. I don't think they're that great. This cucumber I grew like three or four years ago, and it's incredibly good. For eating fresh, you can't beat it. I'm sorry. Um, it says it right here, right in the description. 
A delicious, very sweet cucumber that is usually picked small does not need peeling as the skin is very tender. Um, bred in is or developed in Israel at a kibbutz, becoming popular because of its fine flavor and high yields. Okay. They're not kidding about the yields. This thing yields so much cucumbers. It's one of the better varieties to grow in a greenhouse, as it says, because it's parthenocarpic. It doesn't need pollination. And that's one of the biggest problems with cucumbers. They always need pollination because they never put out as much fruit as there are flowers. So this one here, and I can attest, puts out a crap ton of cucumbers. I mean a crap ton. Not only is it a crap ton, but they're insanely good. They have li like literally the best of both worlds. Um, you can eat these raw, as I said, and they're really, really tasty. Um, big fan of this cucumber. We're going to go back and we're going to grow this one again. And, um, yeah, I mean, hopefully I can get a lot of production out of them, growing them vertically and growing them the way that I'm going to grow these melons as well. Um, spraying them to keep the cucumber beetle away. Alrighty, uh, let's see here. We've got our broccoli, and uh, we're not getting too crazy with the broccoli. We have a lot of seeds still left over, I think. We got the sugar snap peas, that's sugar and. One of my favorites. It's a very early, very early variety of um, of sugar snap pea. We've got the arugula. I have plenty of seed. I don't have to buy any seed of that. Um, we have a radish, French breakfast radish. Highly recommend. Cilantro, we just picked this up from Fedco. It's called Caribe. I think this one had a great flavor to it, and that's why I decided to do it. It says it was the best of 10 strains of cilantro. High marks. Um Hard working with lots of excellent green foliage and grape flavor, long standing. Yeah, so it was uh, that was a big reason too. Is that it, it doesn't it, it holds well in the heat, so I decided this one seemed like a really good option. Love cilantro, love making um, tacos at home. You guys should see my fish tacos. I'm telling you, they're insane. Um, all right, moving on. We have our fennel. Um, don't remember the name of the variety of this, but the, the fennel that I decided to grow is also from Fedco, an Italian variety. Love fennel. Uh, beets, we have the uh, cylinder beet. I have a huge thing of that. Carrots, mochum. Got to go with mochum. It is, I think, the best carrot. There is that other carrot I tried growing this year, and it didn't end up working out. None of them, I don't think, germinated, and if they did... Uh, it just didn't work out. I, I don't remember. I think it's called the Kyoto Red Carrot. Yeah. So you can find that on Baker Creek. And hopefully it works out for you guys. Th these, to me, seem interesting because they have the right texture. They, uh, they don't have a very hard core in the center. And they're really just great for eating fresh. I think I ate them before at a farmer's market. At least I think that was them. And they were incredible. Whatever that carrot was, it was some of the best eating fresh of carrots I've ever had. Um, so I would, I'd be tempted to try a different carrot. But Mocum just does so good. And it's such a, such a good carrot that, I don't know, I don't really feel inclined to try something like that. Something new just yet especially after last year's failure. Uh, this onion we're going to go with, we'll see if this one works out, but it's supposed to be good for flavor and storage. Uh, Italian heirloom, basically, adapted to my latitude. We're going to grow this one at the community garden. And we'll get to the community garden in a minute here because um, we are going to do that again this year or actually going to do it this year. Now, we also have room over here. I haven't decided what, but we'll grow some endive as we talked about actually with our fall garden. Worked out super well, easy to grow. I would love to grow, again, some kohlrabi at some point, the broccoli rob in the fall. There's so many things, by the way, guys, that worked out really well but are specific to the fall. 
we also don't have any room here, it seems like, for the Brussels. But I think the broccoli and the Brussels are going to go together. I don't remember what I decided. Um, broccoli rub. Okay, so there, there's a number of these fall crops that I could get into. I don't need any seeds right now, so maybe we'll talk about them at some other point. Uh, but there's probably a number of them that are escaping me at this point. The big thing I want to mention here in this video is the beans. And, you know, guys, I haven't really put in a ton of time into the beans in terms of getting some of them right and really dedicating, I think, a lot of time to specific beans. Um, there's some actually a friend sent me, some seed I got. There's also some standards. There are some that I really, really like. It, one's called the Kalima bean. This is your typical French bean. Fantastic flavor, very tender, amazing. It, it's got amazing reviews. It is ridiculous. It's so good. I ha you have to grow it if you if you uh, you never tried it. Um, obviously they're out of stock right now, Baker Creek, but this is where I think the only place you can get it. I've tried saving seed, but it never seems to, I never get enough seed because I eat so many of these damn things that I can never get enough seed for next year. Um, but they're, I'm telling you, they're incredible. Um, now there's another option here, which I thought was interesting, which will save me some money because, uh, you know, you can order a lot more seed on Fedco for a pretty reasonable price. Um, the Montsepler Bush Haricots Vert, <laughs> Bush bean, uh, French bean, is, I would imagine, very similar. Excellent raw, minimal bitterness, tender, delicate flavor. That sounds exactly like the Kalima bean. So... I'm kind of tempted to grow this one and say forget about the Kalima bean for this year and see what this one's about. Because if I can get more of this seed, um, that'd probably be better, in all honesty. Um, so we're going to try that, I think. Now, let's see. What else we got here? Oh, yeah. There is the Dragon Tongue bean, which we grew last year. Extremely impressed by this bean, by the way. I think you should definitely grow this one as well. This one's great for cooking. Put them in the oven with your eggplant fries, olive oil, salt. They come out amazing. Um, really, really good. Again, though, I think they're more for cooking rather than eating fresh. They're a wax bean type. So similar style in that they grow as a small bush bean. But again, they totally different flavor, totally different bean. Uh, my opinion a different experience and uh very well worth growing both now moving on again we have i wanted to grow a lot of shell beans because i wanted to be able to have shelled beans all winter and i grew remember the hidatsa shield bean was ones that i grew up the corn um however we planted the hidatsa shield beans a little bit later than i should have and i didn't even expect that the corn was going to just double in size and like I think it was like a week or two weeks or something crazy my corn at one point last year just took off and I was really thinking I should wait on the seed for the beans but really I shouldn't have and as a result I didn't get a whole lot of beans um, in fact I don't really know how that works because it just seems like you're not really going to get a whole lot of production out of those beans um, it seems quite difficult, and maybe I don't have enough light there. I don't know, but I, it's worth a shot again in the in the, you know this upcoming season. But I think what I'm going to try to focus on instead is actually something like a bush bean, uh, maybe something like a teepee bean type thing where I can grow them on a teepee, and they can just climb up the teepee, and then I'll have enough beans to just let them sit there and dry and turn into beans, some kind of climbing bean. This black cocoa variety here looked very interesting to me. I mean, look at that photo. That just, to me, that looks great. You know, that's the kind of bean I want, right? That's one bush bean right there. So that's awesome. Uh, abundant five-inch round pods of 
plump, shiny black seeds that resist shattering in the garden. Easy to shell. Da, 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 it, says, it says right here, it can be harvested as a green bean, although it gets tough if harvested when fully mature. Ten days later, it's a good shell bean. Uh, but it comes into its own as a refried or soup bean. Yeah, so, you know, I'm excited for this. I would like to get some sort of bean. Whether I can grow them up, like I said, a teepee of some kind or on the ground like a bush bean. We'll have to figure this out and play around with this. The other bean I want to grow is the red noodle bean. And this one I was supposed to grow up vertically on the sides of my community garden. I, that was the plan, up the deer fence, essentially. And I just don't think um, I'd had anywhere really to put it this year. So we're going to try it again. We're going to grow this one again, like I said, around the deer fence see if that works out maybe the deer will get them i don't know but um i want to taste some i want to see what they're about they're more i would imagine for cooking but you could of course shell them right um but i think that's not necessarily what they're meant for is really the type of cooking i think my friend pete actually sent me some seeds of uh similar to that variety if not the same one and then what we're going to do is actually grow some fava beans and, or broad beans, whatever you want to call them. I dedicated a huge space for these beans because I love fava beans. Problem is, I was having some digestion problems after eating them. I ordered some roasted a brand. I forget what they're called. They're called the Bada Bean Bada Boom. And I ordered those just to have like a nice snack. That's like a bean, you know, just to get more legumes in my diet. And I, those definitely were giving me some gastro problems. So I stopped eating them. Um, and that makes me wonder about fava beans, if I should really even grow them because maybe they're just going to give me problems. I know beans in general are just difficult to digest for most people. They're high on the FODMAPs, right? Um, people could also bring up lectins or whatever. I mean, there's so many things that people have theories on about these, but... I do know that if I ate enough of them, I'd be fine. You know, just keep eating them. My stomach will eventually adapt and be able to digest them better. But was it the quality of the bean I was eating? The fact that it was a processed product and maybe it was stale or something? Or I don't know. I really, I really don't have the answer. So I'm kind of reluctant now, unfortunately, to grow fava beans. I don't know what to do. Um, yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of lost on that one. So we'll, we'll just find out. But the Windsor bean is really the one I think that's the standard. If I decide to go with it, this is obviously what I'm going to do. You got to plant them out like first thing of the year. You start them indoors, transplant them out, and get them in the ground by like March 1st or something crazy. Um, March 15th, at least here in this climate, as early as possible. So that those are the that's the deal there, McNeil, with uh, with all these beans, and let's see here. That brings us now to some of the other stuff. Okay, so let's go to the community garden, and you can see here we're gonna grow onions. We talked about the onions, potatoes. I'm gonna try to get my hands on some German butterball today, and if you German butterball potato seed i'm pretty sure the main potato lady will have them and this is exactly what i want to grow because they're incredibly good yeah so i'm going to probably buy some of these before the year ends and we're going to grow them at this community garden i don't know how much success i'm going to have here I have never really had great success growing potatoes so we'll see uh, it'll be a learning experience for sure um I'm sure I have I have nothing to lose, you know? Why not? It's going to be obviously later, probably by the time I get the onions and the potatoes planted, it's going to be like April 15th, which is unfortunately quite late at that point for both of them. But if I can somehow figure out a way, especially get my onions, you know, really started early and get them to a big size by the time I transplant them out, I should be okay. 
All right, so then that leaves us here with the with the corn and the squash. And any beans, maybe I want to stick some beans in here somewhere. I can do that. Gonna stick with the Silver Queen variety of corn. Finally had success with corn. I don't want to mess with that. Plus, I'm not going to be at this community garden all that often, so I'm not going to be feeding the corn as much as I would have liked. Um, not going to be watering the corn as much as I would like. So... It's going to be more difficult to grow corn. Any little help I can get from Silver Queen, the better. Um, it was really tough, unfortunately, with the wind this year, and they really knocked that corn over. My corn in the backyard. We had so much wind, and it just really wasn't uh, wasn't good. I really needed to add probably more fertility to the soil. I don't know. Uh, hill them up. It's tough growing corn, man. I'm telling you. Um, we're going to have to really, I think, come up with something uh, better as we go. Otherwise, I'm going to have to get some stakes and stake even, every single one of them. I don't know. Um, we'll see. We'll see what we're going to do. But underneath this corn is going to be squash of different types. We're going to do things like kabocha, um, butternut. Uh, let's see here. Let me see if I can find some other ones that are jog my memory here we had a whole you know episode by the way guys i think i'm going to dec i decided on either sweet dumpling or the delicata here maybe we'll grow some pumpkins i know this red curry is quite interesting oh spaghetti squash for sure so there's a number of these guys that we're going to grow for winter use. There is also the one from row seven. And I decided to buy them and try them. I haven't tried them. I haven't cooked them up yet, but I did cook up one of them. I think one was the Kogi nut. So the Kogi nut, if we like it, we're going to grow that one or try to. There's also the other one here, which maybe it's not even from them. Yeah, I don't think it's from them. Here's the Kogi nut. have to try this still. Yeah. I think it's called the Honey Nut. And this one's not from row 7, it seems like. But the Honey Nut... Oh, look at this Roma tomato. Oh, my. This may be worth trying here. Oh, this looks really good, too. I want to try that potato as well. I'm going to I'm going to be honest with you. Snow peas. You know, I've never grown snow peas before. Patchwork pepper. What is this stuff? What is this stuff, guys? We got to we got to find out now what this is. All right, let's stay on the, um, what were we talking about? Yeah, the, the Kogi nut and the honey nut. So I tried the honey nut, didn't like it. If I like the Kogi nut, we'll eat it. We're going to grow it. I'm sorry. So, yeah, there's that. Now, this is where we're going. I forgot about this. So we got all these different types of squash. Now there's every box here. This is a squash. This is a squash, 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 squash. So I got nine plantings of squash, basically. Each planting is going to have roughly three plants, um, like you normally would do, like melons or things like that. And that's just all going to be grown underneath. We're not going to grow any zucchini this year, I decided. I don't really like zucchini that much. I know people are are really obsessed with it, um, but here's one that I thought was very interesting in that you could use this as a zucchini. This is a vining zucchini here that gets long, slender zucchini. You can cut them up and eat them like zucchini, or you can let them kind of dry or cure, and then they turn into like a butternut. All-purpose squash. Italians use it for gnocchi, ravioli, rich, flavorful, great for baking pies. One of the best eating summer squash. 
Very tender, mild, sweet tasting. The flavor is superb, right? Amazing. But we could also use it, as I've read actually down here, and as you can see, here's actually a photo by somebody. Um, da, 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 da. They're great for storage and processing. But you can see here, they turn into like a butternut. Well, I don't remember where it is, guys, but, you know, this is a multi-purpose squash that I think has a lot of value, obviously. Now, this one here I just saw on row seven seems quite interesting as well. It's called the Center Cut, a new chapter for the heirloom trombocino and has no answer to ho-hum zucchini. <laughs> Young green squash were selected for their sweet, nutty flavor, meaty texture. Native to Italy, the whimsical long neck trombocino is more often found on in the autumn in the kitchen. Blah, 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 blah. It's a dual purpose squash, like I said. Both summer and winter. We prefer the summer self. The green immature fruit for the nutty taste and meaty texture. Less watery than average, having a more complex flavor. It's dense. Interesting. That's awesome. Look at that. I guess citrus would go pretty well with the zucchini, wouldn't it? If that's what that is, it looks like citrus to me. Or is that a peach? No, that's the other side of it. That's the that's the interior. I don't know what that is, guys, but it looks good. <laughs> it looks good, doesn't it? All right, so I think we're we have we have some options here between this guy and the other guy and whatever. There's a lot of options with squash, and I think I'm not a big fan of summer squash in general, but maybe I can be convinced. I don't know. We'll see. All righty, moving on. So we have our beans sorted out, potatoes, our onions, our corn. Maybe you'll have some flowers and different things in random areas of the community garden. But I also need a spot here for the soybeans. And I can't forget about these. But I can put them almost anywhere, it seems like. They do so well, even in like a lot of shade. This variety here called Chiba Green is incredibly productive. Very, very good. Love edamame every year. Highly recommend. They're, they are just ridiculously productive. Um, yeah, just highly recommend if you guys can find that variety. The last thing we're going to do is actually we're going to get into some microgreens. And I'm going to grow microgreens mostly for health. But this one here actually is got a wasabi flavor. It's not wasabi but you can grow it and it tastes like wasabi. Why not? I would love to put this on a lot of my sandwiches, burgers, hot dogs, whatever. Just throw that in there, give you some great flavor, good texture. Big fan of uh, wasabi flavor. Obviously, arugula, big fan. It's definitely very healthy for you. And then uh, the, the main thing I think what we'll do with the microgreens is actually grow broccoli sprouts um as we've maybe have talked about i think at one point was the sulforaphane and the broccoli sprouts look it up it's pretty interesting i know dr Rhonda patrick is obsessed with that stuff so we're gonna try it um i just need to get myself um 
some trays. I think that's what we're going to do is order some trays for growing some microgreens. And eh, we're not going to go too crazy with it, but just enough to get us a feel for the whole thing and see what we're doing. And yeah, we'll keep you guys updated on that. Um, I want to thank everybody here for watching. Yeah, this was a long one. Um, well, it wasn't that long. It was an hour and nine minutes, an hour and ten minutes. So anyway, I want to thank everybody for getting this far. If you did, please leave us a review or subscribe hit you know leave us a comment let me know what you guys are going to grow um, i'm very interested to know and um yeah we'll see everybody soon for the next episode all right take care guys have a great new year new 2020 21 i'm sorry we're finally rid of 2020 and uh it's only up from here right guys all righty we'll see everybody soon uh like i said take care everybody